shut the fuck up and listen to me. Welcome to Hashtag Dave Speaks. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Dave Speaks. Uh, I'm using a different microphone today. I'm just kind of recording this one on the go, so if I sound a little different, bear with me. Uh, it's got to be better than what we, when we record in the car. This episode of Hashtag Dave Speaks is kind of an introspective one. Uh, it's kind of based on some of the, the opportunities that I took over the past week or so. In some situations that kind of came to me and it made me just start thinking about the art of podcasting in general. This episode is really just sort of a way to, I guess, express what it is exactly that I think is most important and I guess kind of like peel the curtain back and show what it's like for a content creator. I don't know if I have all the answers. I can almost guarantee you that I don't. What I do know is I'm not afraid of a fucking thing. Letting go completely is step one when it comes to pursuing your dream. I guess that kind of comes, that trickles right into step two. (laughs) Step two to me is ask, just fucking ask. The Boston Sports Stars podcast on the BSN Network Featuring myself, Aaron from WECP, and Joe from Joe's Fantasy Field Goal. We were fortunate enough to do interviews with the guys like Michael Holly or Rich Keefe, both on WEI. Michael Holly, a little bit no, like a little bit more revered as a writer. You know, he's got the the David Ortiz, Poppy, My Story biography out. He's written books on Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and and what it's like in the Patriots' war room with the book titled War Room. In Patriot Reign, multiple-time New York Times bestseller. Rich Keefe, a very popular younger crowd, you know, stemmed from 98.5, moved on over to WEI. He's got the hashtag Dork Podcast, which has kind of helped mold the, the identity of the Boston Sports Nerds podcast, the way they do segments, stuff like that. As a as a listener of the Dork podcast, I thought, man, that's a really really good structure. And talk to the guys. I think we should apply, it. and we did, and we like it. And you know, obviously, we're a very different show than Hashtag Dork, but those little nuances on how you get through different topics, but. A lot of people say, like, wow, you got Michael Holly? How'd you get Michael Holly? I just asked. I follow Michael Holly on Twitter. I tweeted him. I said, hey, Michael, uh, we would love to have you on our Boston Sports Talk podcast. Would you be interested? He hit me with a follow back. Wasn't really sure if that meant, like, Hey, I see you. I'm going to scope you out for a little while. (laughs) I'm going to check out what you guys are about before I say anything. Or if that was a very subtle, like, here you go. You can slide into my DMs, which I did. I saw him follow me and said, what the hell? I just asked. Hey, Mike, I appreciate the follow back. Uh, You know, we're very sincere. 
and we meant it when we said we'd love to have you on the show. Is there any chance you'd be interested? He says, I would love to do that. And he came on and gave us like 50 minutes, an hour of his time, some really, really interesting stuff. And there was a part during that interview where Aaron asked him to, to marry, fuck, kill three other members at WEI that we had listed. And he said he would marry Rich Keefe. While Michael Holly was on the phone with us, he said, I would go down the aisle with Rich Keefe. I tweeted Rich Keefe. Hey, we just had Michael Holly on our podcast, and I'm only name dropping him because it's important to the story. He just said he would marry you, and he gave him a murder fuck kill. Or marry fuck kill, sorry. Marry fuck kill. And I would love it if you would come on and respond to the fact that he wants to marry you. And he says, yeah, that sounds great. Rich Keefe comes on. Why? Because I asked. This isn't about me. Like I'm not, and I'm not saying, oh, look what I did. I asked. <laughs> the point is, is that it's really, really simple. And if you think like, wow, Dave got this guy on and then that guy on. So could you. You just got to ask. We don't do anything special. We don't do anything completely different than the norm. We have our own opinions. We have our own takes. Of course, we have brains that are unique to ourselves. And we think of ideas. And show ideas. And segment ideas. And we think of content that we can create with the brains that are unique to us. Yeah, sure. But anything that we've accomplished is because we just asked if we could. And I'm not trying to sound like Jim Carrey from Jim and Andy, where you could just manifest everything. It's not necessarily like that. It's just, if you want something, ask for it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're still not going to have it? You don't lose anything by asking. You only win. In my entire life, there's a couple things that I love with all of my heart. One of them is debate. I love the art form of debate and argument so much that I've missed my calling as some sort of lawyer or professional debater or whatever. I love to argue. You know what else I really love more than almost anything in this world is to win. Is to not lose. So when you ask someone for help, or if you ask someone to do something with you, for you, whatever, you have nothing to lose. So those are things I would do all the time because I love to win. I love to not lose. So wouldn't I, as a as a not losing lover, do things? Things that I would not lose in all the time? Yeah, (laughs) I do. I ask. Why? Because I have nothing to lose. Being in the business of creating content, podcasts, videos, whatever it may be, blogs, I've done it all. I've, I've blogged, I've covered stories. I've done YouTube videos. I'm doing a YouTube video series channel. I do podcasting. I do three of those. I work really hard. And this is a pat on like pat on the back moment for myself, but it's, again, it's not for me. I don't want you to praise me. I want to tell you And this is for everyone that's on our network, too. It's not going to happen with just me. You need the help of others. And I have a really, really great group of guys that have bought in completely to what it is we're trying to do. We don't make money. This isn't a source of income for anybody. 
We have a great advertisement partner right now with the ladies at All Honestly Natural Soaps at allhonestlynatural.com. We ran an ad for them. They paid us for it. But that's it. That's the money that we make is trying to land an advertisement spot with somebody. We don't have a million subscribers and we don't get 10 million downloads a month. So we don't have like me undies ads. We don't have my pillow ads. We don't have square cash or you know whatever whatever square space. You know, we don't get ads like that. We get local people, which is great. There's a beauty in that. Being able to promote something local, someone that's doing the same exact thing you're doing, which is just trying to do what they want to do. And hopefully we can strengthen each other by doing so. And not even because they paid me, legitimately all honestly natural soaps are the best soaps I've ever used in my entire life they're bars of soap they're made with all natural ingredients it's incredible go to allhonestlynatural.com if you put in the code word BSNERDS all capital letters you get 10% off your purchase but this isn't even a pay- this isn't even a paid for spot for them they do that on the Boston Sports Nerds podcast I just really really care about their product so I'm just saying that out of my own goodwill. Tonight, in the town that I live, they do this thing called the Holiday Stroll. And the Holiday Stroll is to support local business. And all the shops downtown stay open late, and people just walk around and check out the shops. It's an opportunity to go in some stores that you may not have gone into and learn something new. I sat outside with a table and a cup and a bunch of stuff that was donated to us for a fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Club of Southeastern Connecticut, which is where I'm from. We cleaned up there. The money's for charity, but we did a great job. And I started thinking like, man, you know, my girlfriend, who also has a YouTube channel, she's a content creator. She says, man, I can't believe how much money you raised there. I said, yeah. I started thinking about how much stuff was donated. Several books signed by the authors, you know, covering New England sports, a lot of Patriots books. Gift cards to local restaurants. We had a uh, little, like... I don't even know what to call it, like this movie bundle gift bag type thing where it was like a, I don't know, it was like one of those raffle packages, you know, when you we do a raffle and it came with like two or three Blu-rays, a bunch of popcorn, some candy, a couple glasses, uh, of course I had like the garlic salt for the, uh, you know, for the popcorn, it was like the perfect at-home movie night experience that was presented by the good folks at Pass the F and Popcorn. A friend of mine, Chad Dizzle Davis and Liz Reed, they donated that that at stay at home movie night care package. But it's because I asked. Rule number two is going to be the thing that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life. As a content creator, you got to ask. Hey, I want to do this. Is this possible? Someone says no. I say, mm, maybe I believe you. Maybe it's not possible. And you look into it more. You find out that it is or it isn't. Whatever. Hey, I want to try having this person on. You know, for the podcast. I think he'd be a great guest. Hey, I want to go to this place and I want to interview this person. Just ask. I started to talk about rule number three. Rule number three is the work. I work 50 hours a day. Nope, that that's that's not true. 
That is more hours than what's in a day. I work 50 hours a week at my day job. Monday through Friday, occasionally Saturdays. I do three podcasts. Two of them are bi-weekly. They're on the same week. I do a YouTube channel, which is actually a mirror image of one of the two bi-weekly podcasts I do, which is the Four Star Sports Bar Review Podcast. I wouldn't say that what I do is hard. It's fun. It's what I want to do. I want to talk sports with Aaron and Joe. I want to go eat chicken wings and watch a Patriots game with Kevin. And then I want to talk about the chicken wings later. I want to sit right here, right now, and talk about what's on my mind. And I get to do that with hashtag Dave Speaks. On YouTube, I get to get a little creative and do some video editing and kind of keep my brain sharp. But it's a it's a lo- it's a workload. It's a lot. And if you're not consistently thinking about your creation, about your project, about your product, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Maybe maybe I'm a workaholic. I don't know. I've had a lot of people tell me that I put too much energy into this. The goal is to be able to quit my day job and do what I want to do for a living. I will never, ever, ever be able to do that if I don't treat this like a job now because that would mean that it would be my job later. So even though I don't get paid, it doesn't mean I don't have to put in 40 hours a week working, thinking, brainstorming with guys. I mean, Since I have three different projects, one is by myself, so it's just my own conversations. But I like to have people on for this show. So I got to get in touch with somebody, hey, you want to come on, da-da-da, whatever. I try to alternate. I don't want to make it just a strictly guest show, but I don't want it to always be by myself either. And I got to get with Kevin, okay, hey, what sports bar do you want to go to? What do you think about this segment? You know, should we do this? Boston Sports Nerds, hey, guys, what day are we recording? Okay, all right, hey, this just happened for the Celtics. We should talk about it. Don't let me forget it. Yeah, okay, hey, what are you thinking about? It's always, 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 always. Oh, and by the way, we're trying to make we're trying to make revenue too. So it's hey, I just came up with this graphic for a t shirt. I'll talk to the guy right now. What do you think? Run it by the guys. Ah no, I don't like this logo. Okay, what about this one? Yeah, all right, yeah, cool. All right, I'll talk to him, I'll send it over. Ah, he says he can't do that one. Or it's gonna cost more than we hoped. Since we don't make money. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm on my phone. All the time, Facebook messaging, texting, or on the phone, like physically on a phone call with someone all the time. It doesn't stop. And that's perfect. It shouldn't stop. Because I'm not done. We're not done. It should stop when I'm done with it. It's just stuff for me. I mean, I don't mean like, you know, that I could not do this without without the guys that also produce the content. I could do a Dave Speaks right now, but who would care? They'd be like, all right, whatever. You do some stupid bi-weekly podcast. <laughs> what does that matter? The synergy... Synergy is the right word, but also like the the brotherhood, the community, the group that we've created. We're rooting for each other. Shows. Josh Dow, the box seat boys. You know, he, he's got a partner that just can't. He can't because doing the podcast is a lot of work. And his regular job, you know, the thing that actually makes him actual money, which pays his actual bills, needs him at times where he just can't do the podcast. So Josh is working, he's creating, he's working on developing a new image, a new format for a show that's meant for one guy and not meant for two. 
I feel bad for Josh. Josh is a guy who's going for his MBA. He's a student. He's a hard worker. And he does this show weekly by himself, comes up with with literally all the material that he's going to record in a week, does it by himself, and then just shoots it over to, to Joe or I, and we just edit in his music and his sound drops, and then boom. But that's a guy that has a life outside of podcasting. I don't know anyone that got famous from doing a podcast. Like, like I'm talking famous, famous. And what makes it real tough to stand out as a podcaster is the fact that everybody is doing a podcast. So everyone that's already famous is, oh, I can sit there and bullshit for an hour and get paid to do it because I have 10 million followers on Twitter and I tweet out a link of anything and they'll click it so they just get incredible incredible ads just for being already famous and then sitting down and talking for an hour it's the same thing I do I'm not knocking them for it I'm just not famous first (laughs) You know, and Kevin and I probably have some of the more uh, in-depth conversations about what's next. You know, like how do we stay ahead of the curve? Is doing a podcast the way of the future? I mean, it's I don't think radio is going to go anywhere for a while. I thought radio was going to be dead in 10 years and podcast was going to be it. I think you can still do both. That's the great thing about podcasts. You can listen to your radio when you want, and then you can listen to the podcast whenever you want. I mean, like, on demand. We raised a lot of money tonight because we asked. But also, I sat out there in 40-degree weather, 40, 50, whatever. So I think it was actually it was warmer earlier, so it was probably about 50 degrees earlier. Got chilly tonight, boy. And then uh, sat out there all night about four hours, and just asked everyone that walked by, hi, would you like to raise some money? Hi, would you like to raise some money? Hi, how are you? Would you like to raise some money? And I probably got like 30% of people to engage. I say I engaged about about 50% of the people and about 30% of everyone total donated. It's a lot of no's. But what did I lose? Nothing. Not a thing. It's funny, like, I was reading an article in the Huffington Post from a guy who does a YouTube channel. You may know him. His name is Max No Sleeves. And I've actually reached out. Max and I, (laughs) ironically enough, I didn't really know how big of a star he was at the time that we had a conversation. I just saw him do a couple funny Patriots videos, and he had like a Boston accent. And I was like, hey, you know, we do a Boston Sports Nerds podcast, or a Boston Sports Talk podcast called the Boston Sports Nerds. You know, we'd love to have you on sometime. He was like, yeah, yeah, sure, you know, let's figure it out. I'm like, all right, cool. I didn't know that he was like this big-time YouTuber. I just happened to catch a couple videos, and I told my girlfriend, she was like, you, wait, a couple months ago you talked to Max No Sleeve? I was like, yeah, I don't know. And she's like, why didn't you have him on? I said, I don't know. Just never really figured anything out. Not writing it off, though. There's still an opportunity there if he's still interested. But Max and those leaves did an interview in the Huffington Post. and It was about what what is YouTuber, like what are YouTubers? What's a few things that YouTubers should know that you wish you knew before you started? He was like, no days off. And I just, like, instantly, like, perked up. And I'm like, yeah, thank you. You know, like, and I don't even do YouTube like that. I do a bi-weekly thing. I'm working on another second project, but that's for another day. He's like, you know, there's no such thing. When you're on YouTube, you know, people, like, A, you're a consistent schedule. And I believe that's true for podcasts, too. For any project you do, your schedule is really, really important. And it's the level of trust that you create with the consumer. 
if you if you say I'm gonna have this thing out to you Friday, and if they like it and they want to hear it on Friday, then God damn it, they should be able to hear it on Friday because you said so. You know, obviously things happen. You know, there's gonna be power outages. You won't be able to record. You can't do this. Like, I'm not saying you have to be perfect. Lord knows we haven't been. But I hate not being on schedule. I hate it for late or for changing the day on anything or whatever. I hate it. He says, no days off. He says, there's no such thing as being sick. Like, for him, he says, if you're sick, you make a video about how sick you are. And that works for YouTube. You know, you do a podcast. You could do, and you could do it, but YouTube is a vi- the visual aspect of YouTube is so unique that you could do something really funny, like while you're sick, and still be entertaining. But when you're sick doing a podcast, you just sound like shit, and probably don't have any energy, and it probably won't be very well, like very good to listen to. So that's tough. But for YouTube, I get it. You could be, you know, you come up with a funny skit where you're sick, and boom, you get a video. You know. But it's just true. I mean, and, and you know, anyone that's ultra successful will tell you you have to take the leap. I watched Steve Harvey talk about this. Like anyone that's that's done something with their lives has made the leap. They've jumped. They've taken the risk. And the crazy thing about what we're doing is, it's not even risky. It's just commitment. Can you make the leap? Can you be here every Saturday and do this show or every Wednesday and do the show? Or can we, you know, come up with enough episodes of the four star sports bar review so, you know, we can miss a week, but because we'll have one in our back pocket, but it just takes so much time and you need to make time. If you don't make the time for it, it'll never amount to anything. You have to commit. You have to, have to, have to commit to what you're doing. Everyone sees YouTube as like this get rich scheme or podcast. Like, oh yeah, just get some advertisers. You'll be rich. It's not that easy. You know, the internet latches on to really weird things. My girlfriend comments on that all the time. And she's absolutely right. Like the things that become viral online are so odd. Like when you think about the amount of things... They get uploaded to the internet on a daily basis, on an hourly, minute basis, like like that. Hundreds, millions, whatever. Whatever time span you're talking about, there's a just a vast variety of different content uploaded. And the things that you watch on Facebook video because it's funny, or like the fights in the middle of the street that get, you know, twenty four million views of you know, two idiot teenagers fighting each other that that becomes so popular but someone that does a whole bunch of research and studies movies and gives a gives a review on a movie and he puts a lot of work into it you know maybe 80 views 100 views you know, 100 downloads for his podcast, whatever, you know, whatever the numbers are. And this isn't anyone specific. I just mean in general, like the kind of guy that works and works and works, someone that I can relate with. And you watch your project, you, your passion, get 60 downloads or 100 downloads or even 200 downloads. And you're like, I'm watching someone that filmed two people, two other people fight. Yeah. 60 million downloads. So the things that the internet latches onto is really, really bizarre. And you can't try and be that either. Like, you know, that's, I've had conversations like, oh, well, this seems to do really well. Why don't we do that? Like, maybe, maybe you'll get some attention for a while because it's similar, but it's trendy and then it's gone. And you have nothing and it, because you're not who you are. The one thing that does stand out online is uniqueness. So be you so fucking much 
that it's like undeniable. Like, if you try to do something that's popular, you're not doing what you want to do. Well, maybe, I, mean, I should take that back. Maybe you just want to do what's popular. Everyone in my life, everyone in my life has told me that I should be in sports broadcasting. And I just told them, take that BR out, put a P there, because I'm doing sports podcasting. I've been an entertainer, you know, around the house with my friends. I'm a center of attention guy. I'm always the one that's trying to do something new, you know. It's a fine, fine line of trying to identify what the next big thing is and then staying true to yourself. And it's it's a fine line. But what I'm telling you is be you all the time. And then if you can put you on a thing on a on a network, on a social media outlet of any sort where you can be you there and it's new and that's trendy and you get exposure for being you on this trendy thing, then you win. That's how you win. I also read an article, I read a lot about this kind of stuff, you know. I'm always trying to learn. That's the thing that doesn't stop. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's work. The work comes in. But I read an article by this really famous podcaster. And I can't think of who it was now. May, may have been Adam Carolla, but I don't want to quote him here if that wasn't him. Where he said, he was asked, what would you tell a podcaster? He says, don't start a podcast. <laughs> says, nice. I know that sounds really funny. Because you may think I'm just trying to narrow down the market for a guy like myself who does a podcast. But seriously, everyone does a podcast. Anyone with a microphone and a computer can do a podcast. It's already an oversaturated market. And I'm not telling people to not do a podcast. But I'm just telling people that if you think you're going to do a podcast and become the next big podcaster. It's just a big pond. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not here to crush anyone's dreams. We're just in a rather large pond. Same thing goes with YouTube. Oh, you get a couple views. You get enough views. You get paid. You make money. YouTubers. They're like celebrities now. I'm going to do a YouTube channel. Yeah. You could. And new YouTubers do take off. But you look at the people that are like really, really famous YouTubers. They've been doing it for years. Years. Jenna Marbles. You know. There are people that were like really, really big on YouTube that have now done like professional things outside of the internet and they don't even YouTube anymore. Like some of the biggest YouTubers ever that were there like on the ground level. Guys like Bo Burnham. Like he doesn't go on YouTube anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? He doesn't have to make videos for YouTube. He's He's on a much, much larger professional scale. I hope this podcast doesn't come across as me being narcissistic or pessimistic. It's just something that I know, I know how much I put into it, and I know how much I think about it, and I know how much it's always on my mind, like it never stops. And I don't think I've ever really expressed that with any listener. So, like, this is kind of just a way for me to grab a fan, grab a listener, grab someone that just downloaded this podcast and say, listen, like, if you want someone that really cares about what he's doing, then subscribe. (laughs) Go buy the soap. And put in our promo code because it'll really help us out. Like, and also, don't feel like I am completely aware. I am one hundred percent aware that no one owes me 
a fucking thing. I like it better that way. I want to earn every single opportunity that, that, that we get. I want to be the one that asks. I want to be the one that that gets to break the news to the guys. Like, hey, guess what? You know, exciting news. We just got Michael Holly. We just got Rich Keefe. And I, and I just, I'll never forget the text conversations about it. Like, I, I screenshotted Michael Holly saying he would come on the show, sent it to them, and they were like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Because it was crazy. It was unbelievable. My last, my last piece of advice or rule for podcasting is, you know, rule number one, I just said rule number one. Rule number four, rule number four would be to set small goals, enjoy the fuck out of every time you hit one of those, have a big picture, have a big goal, but don't ever lose sight of the steps it takes to get there. You know, one day I want to have a million downloads on an episode. That's not even the biggest goal, but that's a really, really big one. But let's just use that one for example. A million downloads, one episode. Right now, I'm grinding and promoting and doing everything I can to raise our average for every show that's on the podcast to 100. We have several, several shows that go over 100 players regularly. But for every show on the network, I'm trying to bump our all-time average up over 100 downloads an episode, which is actually pretty impressive when you think about it because there are some episodes that like 190 Whatever, then we have some that have like 23. In our real early days, we had like 12, you know? And so being able to balance those out, the first goal is get the numbers up consistently. And then you got to know when to strike. Okay, now, now let's go up consistently. You wait. You focus on what you're doing. You find new ways to promote. You find new venues. You find new ways to to reach and engage with a new audience. Like I said, my end game is I want to be able to do this and quit my job and do this all day. Do you know how many more shows I would do if I could literally do these all day? But that's the goal. But for me, in the meantime, how do we get more and more? And when should I feel good? And then when do I decide we need more and more? And when do we strike? And should we do another advertisement deal right now? Or should we should we run two ads at the same time? Does it, Do you want to look like you've sold out and all we're doing this is for money? Or do you want to, you know, there's so many bugs. And everyone has an opinion. Everyone tells you what you should do. For me, it's like... I have this idea. I've surrounded myself with people that I really, really trust. I talk to them. And everyone else says, oh, you should do this with this part. Or you should do this. Like, okay, I'm open to opinions and I'm open. But like... It's also mine, and it's also Aaron's, and Joe's, and Kevin's, and Josh's. Like, it's theirs. If Josh said to me, hey, I want to name uh, the Boxy Boys now that um, you know, now that we're not going to be able to make it a two-person show, it's going to be just me, I, I, I want to call it the the Toilet Seat Poop Podcast, I would say, like, hey, probably not a good name. Here's my opinion, but I trust him, and if that's what he wants to do, then he could do that. 
Josh, I'm not saying you should also name the podcast <laughs> the Toilet Seat Poop Podcast. That just sounds ridiculous. But my point is, is that trust the people around you. Never lose sight of your goals. Always ask. You'll never lose if you ask. Work as hard as you possibly can. And stay on schedule. Be consistent. I don't know if this podcast was even worth listening to. (laughs) I just feel like it was something that I wanted to communicate to you guys. And there's not really a lot going on in the sports world. I mean, the Celtics winning streak ended. The Patriots winning streak is still going. Red Sox are relatively quiet for now. We talked about Anton Hudobin on the Boston Sports Nurse Podcast, which you can hear every Friday. This one did come out early due to Thanksgiving. We wanted to get get the episode out early, so that came out late, late Wednesday night, Thursday morning, so people could listen to that during the holiday if they so chose. So here's the routine. Of course, you got hashtag Dave Speaks. That comes out every Sunday. Nope. No, it doesn't. Let's take that again. Here's the routine. You are listening to Hashtag Dave Speaks. That comes out every other Sunday. And in the off weeks that you're not listening to Hashtag Dave Speaks, you get WECP, which is Wrestling Entertainment Collectibles Podcast, brought to you by Aaron and Jerry, the heels of podcasting. So that comes out on Sundays as well. So every Sunday, alternate between Dave Speaks, Hashtag Dave Speaks, and WECP. And then on Monday, every other Monday, the same week that you get Hashtag Dave Speaks, you get the Four Star Sports Bar Review. You can check that out on YouTube. You can search Four Star Sports Bar on YouTube, take you right to the channel. You'll be able to check out all of our previous videos. You can subscribe there. You can hit the like button. It really helped that out. Of course, the podcast version of it is also uploaded on Mondays. That'll be available to you through iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, anywhere podcasts are heard. Then on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, you get Joe's Fantasy Field Goal, where Joe gives you some really, really good fantasy football advice. That show's coming to a close over the next month and a half as the football season dwindles down. Joe's going to be working on another project, though, to do uh, either weekly or bi-weekly. I'm not really sure, but... Joe will be working on something else. And then, of course, like we said, there's the box seat boys, which may be going through a little brand change, a little format change. That comes to you every Wednesday. It's with Josh Dow, where he goes against the spread and goes over national headlines. And every Friday, so skip Thursday. Go right to Friday. You get the Boston Sports Nerds Podcast. That's every week. That's with Aaron, Joe, and I. That's the original show on the network. All right, guys. Just if you're looking to get into the business of creating content, a podcast, a YouTube channel, a blog, just take my rules. Use them for yourself. I hope they work. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like... Everyone wants to do a podcast. Everyone wants to be a millionaire YouTuber. Everyone wants to be a blogger that just gets paid to stay at home and you know, do recipe reviews or whatever. It doesn't happen that easy. And I'm not trying to be an asshole. I just want everyone that gets in the business of doing this because I think this is a great time to be alive. Like what a time to be alive where our society as a whole can just literally take a computer, plug in a microphone and be heard and have an audience and develop a fan base and a following. (laughs) If you're up for that, then do it. I want you to create things. I want people to do what they want to do. I love watching people succeed at stuff that they really, really give a fuck about and that they're really passionate about. And I want people to pursue their talents and their passions all the time. There's a guy that I used to work with that was a hell of a baseball player. And he was sitting there at work at this job, and I'm like, dude, you're rotting. 
you're rotting away at your day job, and you should be playing baseball, man. Like, go back to school, play for the baseball team. And he is now. And he didn't do it because I told him, you know what I mean? But it's just, he knew. And when you're really passionate about something, you should do it as much as you possibly can. I'm also not one of those crazy kooks like, oh, quit your job and take the take the leap. You need to pay your bills. But I am living proof that you can do both. It's hard work to balance your life. If you're in a relationship, you got to remember to keep your relationship really important. And your day job and all these things like, you know, your life will overload if you get in the business of creating content on a regular basis. But it's it's manageable. You can do it. Just work hard. And that's the one thing, like growing up the way that I grew up, I just work harder than every single person I know. And I'm so hyper-focused on the BSN network and turning this into something that I think a lot of people might be able to enjoy one day. That I just, I'm going to work harder than you. And that's not a threat or I'm not calling anybody out or anything. I just, if you, if you... If anyone tries to get in the way or try to say, like, oh, you know, I can outwork, like, you're not going to outwork me. You're not. I just, I, I don't, I don't have any doubt about that. And it's, it's not that I have any doubt about you, whoever you are that may be offended by that. I just believe in myself so much. There's like an arrogance that has to come with creating content because you have to just not care. Like I said, don't give a fuck about anything. Don't be scared of a fucking thing. Some idiot bigot racist on on YouTube will probably leave some hateful hate speech for you. Say, oh, you dumb blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever, nerd. Like, I don't care. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of you. There's someone listening to the podcast like, oh, Dave doesn't like Dustin Pedroia. I'm not listening to the podcast anymore. Like, okay, then don't. I mean, do. I want you to listen to the podcast. But don't. If you don't want to, don't. That doesn't scare me. I don't I do not do hashtag Dave Speaks where I rip a guy like Dustin Pedroia to make that one guy that's not going to listen to me anymore that's a Dustin Pedroia. I'm not, I'm not reaching out to Dustin Pedroia fans. <laughs> that's it. I I don't know. I I don't want to get on the Dustin Pedroia soapbox, but in general, don't give a fuck about what anyone says. Don't be scared to ask. Always ask. Always. Rule number three, work hard. Work harder than every person you've ever met in your entire life. That's all I got. I just... I hope this works. I hope there's some sort of... This is some sort of ingredients or recipe for you to succeed. And I hope I catch you guys on the other side. And uh, we'll all be successful together. This has been another episode of Hashtag Dave Speaks. Thank you so much for listening.